What is up everybody, Decky, and today I'm going to be talking about what is the best length for a speaker port, or in other words, how to tune a speaker port for your desired results. Now, this is kind of a follow-up video from uh, this very similar looking thumbnail right here, which is small port versus big port, or what is the best port surface area. Now, if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, feel free to check it out. But in this one, we're going to be basing it off the result from that one, which is this 16 square inches per cubic foot or 3.6 square centimeters per liter, which is a fairly standard, good middle range port surface area per volume of the box. But that's just the surface area. What about the length of the port? Well, here are just some basic principles of ported speakers. Shorter ports tend to be more efficient or higher SPL. They're good for high numbers, uh, higher tuning frequency, if that's what you're after, uh, more compact because there's less port displacement. Basically, the port takes up less space inside the box, but they don't play below tuning virtually whatsoever. If you've got a speaker enclosure which is tuned to 60 hertz, it will have trouble doing 50 hertz properly and also it tends to be boomy or stereotypically lower SQL or sound quality. Long ports, however, are pretty well the opposite of that. Smooth, deep sound, so they're better for sound quality, they just sound better and work better for more situations, but you don't get a peak for SPL, so if you're trying to have a loud car system, it's very difficult to have lows and SPL at the same time, unless you just chuck thousands of watts at it and also it greatly increases box size if you tune super low it can increase the box size greatly so you might want to tune your port length based off what type of genre of music you listen to although you'll soon see the issue for ramp music typically you want to be aiming to the high 20s or low 30s so you want lows but you'll also want it to be loud so just like a high tuned ported box but for rock, however, you might want highs, but the problem is you also want it to be smooth, so you'll also want it to be tuned deep. So basically, you just have to choose the lowest frequency uh, you're able to produce. Say, if you want to choose 32 hertz as a good middle ground, 35 hertz, save a bit of space, maybe 40 hertz, just to get a bit louder up in the 40 hertz, 50 hertz region, that's something you're going to have to choose the lowest frequency you're able to produce. So now that you know what you want, how long exactly does the port need to be? Well, you've got two options. You can either, one, use an equation, which I'm about to show you. Uh, it's a pretty simple equation, so hopefully you won't get <laughs> scared off by it if you're not great at maths. And another option is to use box design software. So first off, we'll start with the equation. Now, instead of showing you what the equation is immediately, I'm going to show you some examples. Now here is WinISD, and you're probably looking at all these graphs thinking, what on earth is going on? But don't worry, I'm going to boil it down for you. Uh, I know I said I was going to use the equation, but this is how I worked out what the equation was. So here's just a bit of background. Uh, you can see here uh, a classic example of what I mentioned before. If you tune it high, say for example this blue one right here, which is tuned to 58 hertz, you can see it has a huge peak right around 64 hertz. So this would be kind of a pretty typical burp box. Whereas, for example, this red one right here is tuned really low. It can go down to 20 hertz quite well, especially compared to the blue one, which is off the spectrum at 20 hertz. So you can see that all these actually end up making quite a nice pattern. And how exactly does this pattern function? You can see 200 centimeters, so this is a very long port. Also, by the way, these are all one cubic foot, just to make it easier, and all have the same area of 16 square inches. So if you want, you can choose your tuning right here. So if you want to tune a box at 28 hertz, it's got to be roughly 125 centimeters long. If you want it at 32, it's got to be 100. If you want it tuned to 43, it's got to be 50. 57.67, so this is higher frequency burp box type stuff. 25 centimeters, and this one right here, right at the top, is uh, basically 80 hertz. 
it's very unlikely you'd be tuning anything this high unless it isn't a subwoofer. It's a ported mid-range speaker, for example, in which case it shouldn't have this peak. So this is basically what we're looking at. If you just want to choose a frequency that I've got here and record the length, that's okay. Now, something I thought I'd also include in this quickly is uh, extremely long ports. For example, uh, here I have the tuning of the box that was in my Mazda, and it was a huge sixth order bandpass tuned to 17 hertz. Now, if I wanted to maintain the 16 square inches of port area per cubic foot, uh, yeah, it'd be a four meter long port, which is just plain ridiculous. That means the port displacements almost double the volume of the box. So this is quite ridiculous. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to something which is not against the law whatsoever, which is just using a smaller port. So this is essentially what I ended up having, a 100 centimeter long port tuned to the same frequency. Now, when ISD doesn't show, they will actually sound different, but these two orange lines overlap exactly. But right here, I use the equivalent of a six centimeter diameter port, except I used lots of flaring and I had it vent straight against the surface in order to get rid of any turbulence. So that's a trick you can use if your port length ends up coming out way too long, but you're gonna have to get on WinISD and actually work it out yourself. So back to the equation. What exactly is the equation if you don't wanna download WinISD, which is fair enough. Here we have two different ones, uh, port length in centimeter. Uh, it's 320 divided by tuning squared. And in inches, it's 200 divided by tuning squared. Now, these are both ballpark numbers. There's many factors that come into it, but these are how to find the tuning for the 16 square inches per cubic foot specifically. If port area is less, it will affect this. If it's more, it'll affect this. Uh, driver displacement affects this. So this is just a super general figure. It's also not linear. So at the extreme ends, this equation is inaccurate, but right around the 40 Hertz mark, it's pretty accurate. So here are just some two examples. Uh, the top one, we have centimeters, the bottom one inches. So 320, now target frequency of 32 Hertz squared ends up being 320 divided by 32 squared is the same as this bit here, 320 divided by 32 is 10. So it's 10 squared, which is 100 centimeters, which is the length that I showed you just a second ago. Now for inches, 200 divided by 64 squared, which is 3.125 squared, which is 9.8 inches. So if you want a 64 hertz tuned box, with the 16 square inches per cubic foot, then you'll need roughly a 10 inch long port. And once again, this is per cubic foot. So if you've got a 10 cubic foot box, then you'll have an area of 160 square centimeters. This length remains the same. So it is still 9.8. It doesn't get any longer, it doesn't get any shorter. It stays the same, it's a ratio. But yeah, as I mentioned before, 100 centimeters is extremely long for a port if it's a 10 inch box, which is what I was showing before, a 10 inch driver in a one cubic foot box. So where exactly do you go from here? Uh, consider you might actually be better off with a bigger sub. 32 hertz is pretty deep for a 10 inch, uh, 12 inches more getting reasonable, which would be a 60 liter box or a two cubic foot box which then means the port isn't so ridiculously long for how wide it is. Also, once again, it's not against the law to use a smaller port as long as you flare it really carefully. Otherwise, you may end up with chuffing, but once again, uh, not a, you won't get a perfect result, but you'll still get a result. So it's worth a shot, even if you don't use flared ports. I'd still say just go for it. And yeah, for this one, you need to change the area and win ISD. So now onto the software. Once again, it is WinISD. I've got a link down in the description if you want to download it and try it out yourself. So first things to do is just to load it up, then you click driver editor, and then you put your specs into driver editor. If you don't have a sub yet, then feel free to check out my choosing the right subwoofer video, link in the description also. So here we have just an empty window of WinISD. 
uh, when you put in your specs, what you would do is go up the top here. Your WinISD may look different, but it should work similarly. So if you click editor, then what you would do is you type in. So uh, actually right here, I'm going to put in just a fake one. I'm going to call it 11111 just to make it easy to find. Uh, parameters, QES, I'm going to go 0.5. QMS 5. Now these are just, I'm just coming up with them off the top of my head. QTS should be 0.45. Uh, FS, go with 30 hertz with a VAS of, we'll go, go 40, 40 liters. Now driver diameter, I'll say I'll make it a 12 inch, so it'd be roughly a 10 inch driver diameter. Yeah, I know I've got imperial and metric all over the place here. I just find this easier to remember and for RE it doesn't really matter but we'll make it make it a 4 ohm sub with a DC resistance of 3 ohms and PE now this RMS is not power RMS so don't put your power RMS in here uh, you put your power RMS right here in PE and we'll make it 500 watts and inductance just to be so sure of 1.7 milliohms X max we'll make it uh, 13 millimeters and X limb of I don't know four centimeters although I don't really think X limb does anything in this software this is usually the number of specs I put in for a sub and if I hit save yeah that'll do uh, you can see all these other ones these are just from marking around with different equations so close that new project now click that and look there we can find our driver right there uh, feel free to name your driver just like a bunch of ones or something just so it's really easy to find right at the top as it comes default with a ton of drivers all of which are probably not the ones you are using so just select that next next now it's ported next now it will also choose uh which type based off the ebp but i went for a 60 just so i know it's going to be ported and i'll go through now what we end up here is a box which is roughly 2.4 cubic foot. In fact, we'll just make it 2.5. So 2.5 cubic foot, uh, 16 times 2.5. So if I make it like that, 40 square inches. So I'm gonna make it 10 by four. And we get a length of 150 centimeters, which is really quite long. So if you're willing to have that length, then that's okay. Uh, right here though, if you don't, if you can't handle it that long, then maybe, or maybe, maybe 26 hertz is too low. Make it 36. Now we've got a nice big hump right here. And yeah, there we go. We've shortened the port quite a lot. 71 centimeters, still quite long, quite manageable though. Or alternatively, we could just go for a six inch aero port, which is 50 centimeters. So there, that's how we can get our port length right down. If I go back to 28, still with the same port, we, how, we now have 89 centimeters. So that's how to get it from 150 centimeters down to 90 centimeters. Now something else is if you put in 38 hertz, and you get this nice big peak here, what you can actually do is decrease the box slightly and it'll just reduce that peak just a wee bit. Something else to mention is uh, WinISD uh, shows room response, standard room response or free air response in a car. Everything from cabin resonance down actually gets a 12 dB proctored boost. So starting right here, draw a line up, which gets to from minus 24 to minus 12 so right there so lift everything up by that amount so this would actually look like that so it'd look way more flat in a car with a hump right at this 38 40 hertz mark so that just about covers the basics of port length tuning uh, hopefully you've learned something and if not hopefully it's reinforced your previous knowledge or something uh, if you have another opinion on the topic, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Uh, feel free to discuss if you want to ask any questions. 
I'll answer just about anything uh, bar how you can you make up a cutting list for me I have uh, some random sub what you can't find online so <laughs> uh, yeah thanks for watching and see ya also like and subscribe thank you <laughs>